you can choose to helicopter because you'll hear it listen you hear that right i don't like it then the <clears throat> wow so sorry i'm glad you apologized because when you said then and your voice cracked <laughs> i was really really offended <laughs> no but i sound off. annoying to myself I sound annoying to myself, too. It's because my voice is in my head every time I talk. Imagine that. Hey, guys. I'm Anna. And I'm Brian. And we are Those, Those Annoying, annoying vegans. vegans. Guys, Thanksgiving is almost here. It is. But as vegans, it's not one of our favorite holidays. No. Not for the giving thanks part, though. Not for the giving thanks part. We just think it's counterintuitive to give thanks when there's the carcass of a dead bird at the center of the table. I don't know, even when I ate meat, I never liked the taste of turkey. I always opted for the sides. The sides are the best. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to Thanksgiving, the sides are where it's at. Which is why today we're going to show you how to make arguably everybody's favorite side, stuffing. These are our stuffing, stuffing muffins. muffins. And we're even going to top them with a mushroom gravy. And as always, this recipe is delicious, affordable, and easy to make. So let's make it. Let's make it. Oh, where are they? We got some stuffing muffins. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm -hmm. I know a few of you don't like mushrooms, but I don't know how. <laughs> mm -hmm. This tastes exactly like stuffing. Mm. Like you do not need. Mm -mm. What do they normally put in it? Like chicken stock or beef Dairy. stock? Mm -hmm. This is amazing. Mm. This is wonderful. No, guys, you can opt to have the the gravy. You don't have to blend it at the end. You can have chunky gravy. Mm -hmm. We just wanted to blend it because we wanted a stronger mushroomy flavor. Since there is soy milk, mm -hmm. you can use your favorite plant-based milk, but uh, the soy milk gives it a sweet sort of flavor. And by blending it, it gives it a more mushroomy flavor. And if you want like a brown gravy instead of a creamy gravy, mm -hmm. you can just use veggie stock, four cups veggie stock instead of half soy milk, half stock. But Mm. I mean, why would you do that? Tell me why. This is so good, I'm going to cry. <laughs> Tasty! Tasty! Mm -hmm. 
it's really not hard to veganize Thanksgiving at all. At all. Most of it I mean, is practically yeah, vegan. Everything except the dead bird is easily, easily made vegan. And even the dead bird... Look what we're having. Last year we had the Trader Joe's one. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. But we've never had the tofurkey one. Looks yep. good to me. Tofu turkey. Tofurkey with some stuffing in the middle of it. What's Thanksgiving really about? We know it's about getting together with your friends and your family. It's mm -hmm. about enjoying a good meal together, sure. But the meal, in reality, is not the centerpiece of the event. It is togetherness. That's the centerpiece. We know a lot of you are probably really nervous about Thanksgiving you might not know what to do. We have some tips, and hopefully one of them works for you. There are a few things you can do to make Thanksgiving go smoothly and pleasantly for yourself and for your family and friends. The first method is the go with the flow method. This is where you mm -hmm. show up to your family's Thanksgiving dinner. Yes, there is a dead bird at the center of the table, but you go there and you just eat the vegan stuff or you make your own dish. And just ignore the rest. Yeah. <laughs> Focus on talking with your family and friends and having a good time. And there's a lot of weight behind that method because what it does is it makes being vegan at Thanksgiving normal. When, Hi. when you start really digging in and acknowledging the fact that, hey, there's a dead bird here and I can't eat anything and what did you make for me? Like, is there a vegan option? All that does is make it seem like, God, this person is difficult. But simply by being at a Thanksgiving, eating the vegan sides, bringing a vegan dish, enjoying the company, enjoying the conversation, and just making it like, yeah, I'm here, I'm at Thanksgiving, and I'm vegan, it's no big deal. And we know a lot of you are worried about doing that, getting there, and then being ambushed, or getting the comments, or getting the jabs. And we figured there's a good preemptive way to avoid that, which is, Prior to the gathering, pick out those people whom you feel you might kind of bump heads with and have a private conversation with them. It really helps to sit down with them separately because I feel like people can be like lemming sometimes. Like if you're mm -hmm. at a dinner table and one person starts then everybody else starts and it just becomes this sort of barrage. But if you sit down with them privately before the event, you might have a conversation and get them to understand how much it means to you to have them be there and be supportive of you. Because family is so close and you've grown up with family and your family members have known you your whole life, there is that idea of you were not vegan for this many years and now all of a sudden you're vegan. It's easy to just, like Anna said, have a face-to-face -face conversation or over the phone if you're not in the same city or state that they are and just say, I recognize I used to eat steak and chicken wings, but I'm vegan now and this is important to me and this is important to my life, that usually clears things up. It's not rude, it's not insulting, it's not antagonizing, it's not, you know, staring down your nose at the person. It's just saying, hey, family member and or friend, whom I've known for many years and I love very much, this is now very important to me. I can't imagine a family member or close friend not accepting that and respecting that. Then there is the second method. It's like an addendum to method number one, which is Bring a vegan friend if mm -hmm. you have one. Or well, significant other. Or a significant other. Because that way you're there as a team and you can be supportive of each other. And of course you can add those steps from method one, which is have those conversations with your family and friends in private uh, if you feel like it's going to be an issue. Method number three, we like to call it the vegan activist method, which is just don't go to any Thanksgiving gatherings if they're serving animal products. And that might be hard because nearly every single Thanksgiving gathering does have animal products. And do you want to see your family and friends? Of course you do. But if being there is going to upset you to the point where things might get a little antagonistic, maybe just remove yourself from the scenario and let your absence do the talking for you. People don't really respond well to being talked down to or being yelled at or being argued with. And sometimes your absence might speak way louder than you ever could if you were the only vegan at an event. They might wonder, oh, where's so-and-so? Oh, they're not coming this year. Why? Well, they're vegan and we're not having a vegan Thanksgiving. That speaks volumes. That's the method we've personally chosen. I know last year we had a couple of invitations that we turned down. And here's the thing. This is what we did differently too, which was a little scary at first, but it's a year later and everything's fine. The world's still spinning. <laughs> we had an invitation from a couple of friends and we talked about it and we figured it no longer 
felt right. So we said, thank you so much. We appreciate the invitation, but we just don't want to be around meat this Thanksgiving. And I can't say it was well received. They didn't reply. It wasn't addressed, but we made our point and we're still friends. And yeah. they cooked us a vegan dinner not even a month ago <laughs> yeah. and it was delicious. So it's kind of the same as simply stopping buying animal products at the grocery store. You're, you're boycotting, essentially. You're, you're saying, I'm not going to put my dollar or my energy or my being into this. I'm going to abstain from it. And if enough people abstain from it, then the message will be very loud. Method number four is be proactive. Throw your own vegan Thanksgiving. You can do it. <laughs> That's what we're doing this year. <laughs> we're having a Friendsgiving mm -hmm. on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, so that our friends can still go to their families and then come to us. Yeah. And we're going to be making these stuff and muffins for them. The great part about that is that you make the rules. You make all the food vegan. You ask that people please bring vegan food. Yeah, it's really easy. If you host any gathering at your house or your apartment, you can set the rules. You say, I'm going to be preparing X, Y, and Z. And if you could please bring A, B, or C, but have none of it contain animal products. You can make those types of requests. I know yeah. People might be shy about making that request, but every time we've done it, we haven't heard from our friends like, oh my God. Yeah. We have to find a vegan food to bring over to Brian and Anna's place. No, if anything, it starts a conversation. And yeah. if they're wondering, oh, what can I do to make this vegan? And they ask you. Or, or they start exploring exactly. and they go, hey, this happens to be vegan. You know, I like eating it anyway. So I didn't realize it happened to be vegan because people eat vegan foods all the time. Without and realizing it. I don't it. think they think about it. People look at vegan food as this separate like category of food. <laughs> when people have been eating vegan food their whole lives, there's really only like a handful of things that make something not vegan. Almost everything else is already vegan. Method number five is just don't celebrate it. We know that Thanksgiving doesn't mean the same thing to everybody. We are aware that there is a very harsh history behind the holiday. You can choose to celebrate it in the sense that it's an opportunity for you to get together with your loved ones and give thanks and just put that That's over it. here. Yeah. <laughs> or you can choose to boycott it. Although from a purely uh, vegan activist trying to get as many people to go vegan as possible, mm -hmm. that method might be a little bit throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah. Like simply telling people to get rid of this holiday that they've grown up with and that they love is a lot more difficult than simply saying, hey, how about we modify this holiday yes. so that it doesn't involve dead animals. Right. And we just give thanks for each other, yeah. for our loved ones, for all the great things that have happened this year. And along these lines, on an aside, we know a lot of you have asked us, like, how do I make vegan friends? I don't have vegan friends. I don't know anyone else who's vegan. And so this holiday is probably not going to feel too great, particularly if you're a new vegan. So what do you do? Well, we suggest doing what makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. Everybody's relationships with their family and friends is different. Uh, what works for some might not work for others. You might want to start with method one and ease your way into it and see how it feels. Or you might want to try one of the other methods if you feel strongly enough about them. And when it comes to making vegan friends, there are always meetups, there are events, there are social media. You can connect with people that way. Or you can turn to us. We're, we're here for you. We'll be your vegan friend. We'll be your vegan friends. And you know we look at your comments, we read every single one of them, even though we might not be able to respond to them right away, or now it's getting a little bit difficult to respond to all of them, but we look at all of them. And on that note, let's continue to foster that wholesome community that we've been so proud to have on our channel. Yeah. I think. You know, 99% of the comments are always very positive. Always try to be supportive of each other, especially if you encounter someone who doesn't quite see it your way, but they're willing to learn. Let's just stay away from the insults and the personal attacks. That just doesn't work. It's not effective and it hurts people's feelings. And we want to have an environment that is welcoming to all points of view. So view the comments as a discussion. And so with that, let's head to the vegan news. Vegan news. Italy just banned circus animals. Isn't that amazing? This happened shortly after India banned elephants from their circus. And seeing as there are over a hundred circuses in Italy and about 2,000 animals that perform, 
That's a pretty big move. I think it's pretty much uh, becoming the norm that circuses are bad. Yeah. Uh, mistreating animals to the point where they do little tricks and put on a little show for us human beings. We recognize that in order to get animals to do that, uh, there's a lot of abuse behind the scenes that uh, they don't normally share with the audience. And so I think we're getting to that point where looking at animals do tricks is no longer we can watch, a thing. We can watch people do perform tricks. Yeah. They, they made the choice to do so. And even if it's not like outright abuse, this quote actually puts it really well. Traveling from place to place week after week using temporary collapsible cages and pens, circuses simply cannot provide for the needs of the animals. That's what Jan Creamer, president of Animal Defenders International said. Next up, Egypt has passed its first animal rights law. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah. I mean, they're a little late to the game because yeah. most Arab countries, if not all, have animal welfare laws in place, but it's always a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And what do we always say? <laughs> we always strive for better. At the moment, this law is pretty basic. This draft law aims to secure the simple rights of the animal to be fed, watered, and get health care adequately. It also targets the protection of animals from abuse and negligence. The law will include penalties for those who commit crimes against animals. And number three, Domino's Pizza is committing to offering vegan cheese in their Australia location starting in 2018. Now you might be saying to yourself, Domino's, why would we vegans ever support Domino's? They sell a bunch of cheese, they sell a bunch of processed meat, their company is full of cruelty, why would we ever support them? Telling a business with your dollar where your loyalties lie is going to get that business to change. Mm -hmm. Now, if all vegans just boycott all restaurants that serve meat and vegan food, then they're gonna the stop selling the vegan down. food. So you need to put your dollar where your values are in order to get companies to change. Because I don't believe that Domino's is inherently evil. I don't think their CEO is inherently out to kill all the pigs for pepperoni. I think he sells pepperoni pizzas because that's what people buy. So if people start buying vegan pepperoni pizzas with vegan cheese on them, then that's what they'll sell because they just want to sell stuff. And we recognize that it's only in Australia so far, but got to start somewhere. And I even read that now Pizza Hut is actually putting the feelers out there. Mm -hmm. They're sort of testing their audience uh, to see if they would be interested in a vegan cheese because that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Once one corporation introduces something, then all the other corporations feel the need to compete with it. So if you ever have the opportunity to support a vegan food at a restaurant, even if the restaurant is not 100% vegan, we encourage you to do that. I suggest you do. The same can be said for going grocery shopping. There aren't a whole lot of vegan only grocery stores mm -hmm. and we recognize that. So you just walk right past the meat and the dairy and the eggs and you just buy the vegan foods. They'll pick up on it. Trust us, they're, they're, they're watching their, their money very closely. So guys, if you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. That really lets us know that you like what we're putting out there. If you don't like it, thumbs down is cool too. Hey. And if you haven't already, subscribe. subscribe. And hit that notification bell. Mm -hmm. Ding! Check out our Etsy store for some vegan swag. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And as always, a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for your contributions to the channel. And if you would like to donate to our Patreon, that link is in the description as well. Bye! Bye. Veganaise, ketchup, buffalo sauce, uh, gravy, anything that's supposed to go on something else, you will drink. Yes. Oh. You guys gotta go to Trader Joe's and get the coconut cream <laughs> and then put it in your coffee. Look at this beautiful baby. Everyone was so worried about the germs, the kitten germs. I know. Cats are some of the cleanest animals out there. I think I would have gotten toxoplasmosis by now. Yeah. Because uh, I've had cats since I was 12. At the end of the day, I'm just not a germaphobe. You know what cats also do a lot? Groom. <laughs> they clean themselves. That's why they smell a so good. A lot. Mimis, why are you so beautiful? Look at these little legs with the little paws. Oh my gosh, I can't I stop. I know. How are you? I love you. Okay, say bye, Mimi. Dee 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 dee. Oh, look at that face. You're worth it to me.